How to shoot fashion photography. Are you interested in shooting fashion photography, but you're not really sure how to get started? Well, I'm entirely self-taught and I learned photography so I could shoot fashion. That is what drives my style and my brand. So I've developed a fast and easy method to learn how to shoot fashion photography. And here are my five steps to get you started to building a profitable portfolio. It's showtime. Hello, I'm Mike Lloyd. I run a multi six figure boudoir studio in Silicon Valley, California, and I love shooting fashion. When I first got into photography 11 years ago, I wanted to shoot commercial fashion. That was what drove me. But I'm in Silicon Valley. Like, we make computers here, people wear hoodies and Chuck Taylors. We normally have a fashion scene. And I didn't want to move to New York or LA. So I met Lindsay Adler, who is an idol of mine, and I figured, well, why don't I just shoot families, couples, and now boudoir like it's a fashion shoot? So that's what I do, and it's why my style is so different from other boudoir photographers. So even if you decide that you don't want to shoot commercial fashion, learning to shoot this style can totally separate you from your competition and basically make it so you don't have competition. The five things you can do to start shooting fashion are, one, identifying the point of the shoot. Is this a catalog or a lifestyle shoot? Number two, you are the producer. Number three, putting together the right team. Number four, getting the clothes. And number five, sharing the love. And make sure you stay till the end so you can find out exactly what that means. All right, so point number one, what is the purpose of the shoot? If you want to shoot fashion, you're basically going to accomplish one of two things. It's either a catalog shoot or a lifestyle shoot. Now, catalog shoots are generally a plain background. It could be outdoors, it could be anywhere, but it's the same background, it's the same casual pose, and it's all about the clothes. That's the thing with fashion photography, you're selling clothing or accessories, whatever the thing is, you're selling the garment. It's not about how pretty the model is. It's not about how cool the background is. It's all about the clothes. So your editing, your lighting, everything is about the clothes. So for catalogs, again, simple background, casual pose. It's more about showing the same look with different outfits over and over and over again. So you could shoot 30 different outfits in a day in the same spot, same lighting, just variations of different poses. That's a catalog shoot. Or you could do a lifestyle shoot. And lifestyle is the mood, the feel, the brand behind the clothing. And you're conveying that in the image. So... One of my favorite books is Brand Seduction by Daryl Weber. And in this, he describes building your brand planet. And this is an exercise I use with all of my students. It definitely applies to this. If you were to land on that planet, what would everything look like? So if I'm going to do a commercial shoot for Gap and I'm going to do one for Gucci, those are going to be very, very different shoots. So if you close your eyes and imagine landing your spaceship on planet Gap, just a random city on planet Gap, what is it going to look like? What are the people going to be wearing? What do the buildings look like? How will they be interacting? What does the lighting look like? That's planet Gap. Now, if you land your spaceship on planet Gucci, that's going to be an entirely different world. That's what your lifestyle shoot will look like. That's how I put together my sets. I imagine if I land on that planet, what would everything look like? So choosing whether it's a catalog shoot or a lifestyle shoot will help you plan a successful session. All right, point number two, you are the producer. This is my favorite part, and it's why I don't shoot weddings or events, because I can't control the show. I want to make sure the lighting is good, the hair and makeup is right. I want to put all the pieces together to make sure the images come out exactly how I want them. Now, you might be thinking, I don't know how to do any of that, and that's fine. You'll learn. You'll practice. That's why we do this. So you're the producer. You are making sure the hair and makeup match the look and feel, right? Everything needs to match the planet that you're on. It needs to look appropriate. The clothing, the location, the time of day, all the equipment, you're feeding the staff. Now, I always feed my crew. Now, if I'm hired on to somebody else's crew, like they're already doing a product shot and they just need a photographer and they hire me to do it, I'm probably gonna ask them about food so I can bring a lunch if I need one. But if I'm producing this shoot, I'm bringing on the styling team, I'm bringing on the model and coordinating everything, 
I'm also going to make sure we have food, we have water, so everyone has something to sustain them through a long work day. Even if it's just a two or three hour shoot, having snacks, and I'm not just talking like Mountain Dew and Funyuns, like get something that's sort of healthy. Uh, it can be a bunch of Cliff Bars and bottled water, just something for people to snack on throughout the shoot. Really goes a long way. But coordinating the team, the time of day, making sure everyone's on the same page, that is your job. And it's the coolest thing because it means you control every aspect of your shoot. Now, if you bring on a bunch of people and just let things work themselves out, which is management by abdication, you are going to fail. Almost guaranteed. Because you need someone to take charge, and that's you. You're the photographer. Point number three, choosing the right team. This was super cool, and I didn't realize how quickly I would develop as a photographer until I got the right team around me. And that's with the right hairstylist, makeup artist, working with fashion designers, working with clothing retailers, caterers even. All these things are really important. And the right models, knowing what their strengths are, what they want to do, what they're really good at, what their experience is like. Bringing the right people together will make magic. If you know someone who does hair and makeup and they don't do avant-garde and that's the style you want, you're not going to have a great shoot if they're doing things that you don't do. You know, it's like somebody calling me in to do, I don't know, a boho style wedding. Yes, I'm a photographer, but I don't shoot that style. It's not going to translate well. So it's better to choose people who do the thing that you want them to do and bring them on board. You can go on to Facebook, go into Facebook groups, local Facebook groups for photography scene. There's a ton of them everywhere. You know, there's a couple here in the Bay Area. It's like Bay Area Photographers, Models, and uh, HMUA, something like that, right? Just search for those names. Find meetup groups. It's really easy to find people around you. Or you can just go into salons and ask, hey, is there anyone here who does photo shoot hair and makeup? Go to Mac. Go anywhere where those types of people are working and you'll find somebody. And odds are, if you find a good stylist, they already know models too. Or you just put out a model call on your Facebook or Instagram page, and you're likely to get people to volunteer. So it's a great way to build a team. It's really easy to do, but be picky. Don't just let the first person who raises their hand join your team. Make sure they're going to be a good fit. And when I bring the team together, I always have a planning meeting ahead of time. We coordinate a day and time, meet at a coffee shop usually, and this is where we start brainstorming. I get the hairstylist, the makeup artist, the clothing designer, if there is one, the model, everyone together. We talk about what kind of hairstyle, what kind of makeup do we want to do? What kind of locations, what look and feel are we going for? We map all of this out and make sure everyone has their assignments and they know what's expected of them. If the hairstylist has to go get extensions or clips or something extra, a new kind of makeup, if the model has to make sure they prep their face with moisturizer or wash their hair a certain number of days before the shoot or bring a certain outfit, something, they have to know. Does it need a strapless bra? Uh, do they need underwear that doesn't leave lines? There are a ton of things things to plan for, and you'll learn these along the way as you have to Photoshop things out or make adjustments as you go. But it's cool because once you start talking to the right team, they should know. They'll ask, do I need to bring a certain color underwear? Do I need to bring a blow dryer? Whatever it may be, when you have the right team, it makes the next part really easy. So I coordinate everybody there in this coffee shop meeting, and then you can stay in touch with a group text or a group email thread, get on Slack. There are a ton of ways to coordinate the project from there. And since you are the producer, that's your job. And people are going to love having direction and guidance from you. It's going to make everything run so much more smoothly. You know what's really beautiful about this? You two kids picked me. You didn't have to, but you picked me. Number four, getting the clothes. Now, you don't need to find an actual fashion designer to team up with. If you know someone, swell, but you don't need to. I got my start going to boutique clothing stores that catered to my target clients. And I would go into the store, I'd meet the store owner, and I would basically just introduce myself, invite them to coffee if they wanted or chat in the store. And I would pitch my idea. Hey, I want to do a photo shoot. I love your style. Your clients are my clients. And I think we can cross promote. I'd be happy to give you all the photos from my shoot if I can borrow clothes from your store. And I'd be happy to give you a credit card number in case anything happens. You don't have to pay for anything. And then you can offer promotions with the store owner. So what I did, I would go in and set up my lights and my camera and a backdrop and people could come into the store. My stylist was there to do quick hair and makeup demo. They would get to try on clothes. I would take their pictures 
and upload them to my own Facebook page. So they got to see how good they looked in the pictures. They would buy all the clothes they tried on that day. So the store owner loved it. And they had to go to my Facebook page to download their photos. So I got more followers and more traffic. And that has booked me lifelong clients out of those shoots that were seven and eight years ago. I just got the notification on Facebook today. It's like, you know, your memories, things you posted this day 10 years ago. uh, And I was doing those store shoots. So that's a great way to get new business, to build relationships, and to give value to the store owner. You know, we did have instances where... Maybe the model got lipstick on the dress as she was changing outfits, and I had to buy that dress. Not ideal, but things happen, you know? And it's way more important for me to buy that dress and just add it to my client closet so future people can model with it than it is to try and be sneaky and return damaged goods to the store and ruin that relationship. And there were also times where the models were like, I really like this outfit. Uh, I'm just going to buy it anyway. And sometimes the store owners would let us buy things at cost or at a discount. You can work something out with them. But either way, it's really not that hard. It's called pulling clothing. When you go and borrow stuff from store, Now, if you go to a Macy's or a Nordstrom or big national chain stores, it's going to be tough to do anything like that. You want to go for smaller mom and pop owned retail locations because they're going to be easier to build relationships with. You don't have to go up the chain of command and get district approval and all that nonsense. Just find your local boutiques, put out a message on Facebook again, like, Hey, do we have any local clothing designers in fashion school who need photo shoots for their clothing? That's a thing. Also fashion school students need to do photo shoots with their clothes as part of their course curriculum. So you can also team up with fashion schools. High schools might have fashion fashion programs. My local ones here do. There are a ton of ways that you can get clothing without just having to go buy a bunch of stuff and then return it at the end of the day. And number five, share the love. This is what's going to make every consecutive shoot so much better. When you post your photos, you tag everyone in them and you thank them in the comments. This is your hairstylist, your makeup artist, your caterer. This is the location provided, you know, you are supposed to be there. Uh, Everyone involved. Because when you actually reach out and send thank you cards and then post the images, tagging everyone, giving everyone credit, they're going to appreciate what you've done. They're also probably going to reshare that image on their own account, and that creates exposure for you. And the more love you share, the more likely they're going to want to work with you in the future, and you're building relationships. That's the whole magic of this industry. When I found these stylists to do hair and makeup at those clothing store shoots, they're still the ones I use in my boudoir sessions today. We've been working together. This is our ninth year, and I do not do a shoot without my team. It's It's pretty cool the kind of things that can come out of it. The clothing stores have come and gone. Some stay in business, some don't, and it's fine. Maybe your clientele changes and you no longer need that sort of uh, clothing store in your repertoire, but it's cool. You don't have to break up with people. You just, you know, stop calling them to do shoots. And I would do it like a once in a while thing. You don't need to borrow clothing from the same store every week to keep doing shoots. Mix it up a little bit if you can, but share the love. Make sure everyone feels appreciated and part of the team and respected, and it gets so much easier every time you do this. It makes me want to kiss you guys. Come on, come on. So there you go. That's how to get started building a fashion portfolio. Number one, what kind of shoot are you trying to produce? Is this for a catalog or lifestyle? Because that's going to dictate what you put together. Number two, you're the producer, so you get to take charge. Number three, putting together the right team. This will make or break you. Number four, finding the clothes. It's easier than you think. And number five, share the love. Make sure everyone involved feels appreciated. So if you want to learn more about this, and I talk about vendor relationships and doing model calls in the Boudoir Guild. So if you head to boudoirguild.com, I walk you through step by step exactly how I do this and build these relationships with these other companies that brings me repeated business and helps them as well. And be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn more about making money with your camera, check out my other video, how to start a boudoir photography business, because that's going to tell you exactly how to get started making money as a photographer. So head on over to theboudoirguild.com and I will see you inside.